Before we get started today, I want to say thank you for every single like, comment, recommendation, and a very special thank you to my listener support group. If you like what we do here at Off The Deep End Podcast, please consider checking out the listener support tab on our channel's anchor link. Without you, we would not be able to continue the great work we're doing with these conversations, breaking down boundaries, and helping heal each other by sharing our stories, our trials, our tribulations, and how we process them. Let's jump straight into this episode. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Off The Even Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Eddie, and today I'm joined by Zach. goes by Z Mackin on the Prime Minds Podcast. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this, man, and uh, how the hell are you? Oh, man, I'm doing great. Thank you for having me up here. I appreciate it. It's always a pleasure to join anybody and talk about anything mm-hmm. at any point in time, at really, man. At any point in time, yes. 100%, but I'm doing man. wonderful, brother. It's been a long day at work, and I'm ready to sit back and sip some whiskey and talk some shit with you, man. Awesome. Well, let's fuck it up then. Well, let's get straight into it. Um, I'd always like to set a foundation for who we're talking to. All right. And my listeners, hopefully, they haven't said anything against it yet. So you know what? I'm going to keep rocking with it. What did your childhood look like for you as you as you grew up? Like what what shaped the 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 hunking uh, six pack muscular looking motherfucker sitting in front of me, man? Uh, there's a <laughs> six pack underneath this keg, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I know there is, man. Oh, you're going straight into the Freudian couch, man. I, mm-hmm. I was just talking about how comfortable and hard to get up out of this is. I know. Now you got me stuck, and I got to answer your questions. You have to do it. All right. So I I grew up. Uh, as a only kid for a couple years mm-hmm. uh, and then my mom met my stepdad and popped out a couple uh, siblings for me we kind of all they were the happy family and uh raised it kind of in the church so um we went to church every sunday and wednesday nights and then real life happened mm-hmm. And, you know, I was a kid of the 90s and right at the turn of, you know, right at the end of the 90s is when everything started to go downhill. I don't know why we had to hit this new millennium, man. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. But Prince said we're going to party like in 1999 because he knew the shit was going downhill afterwards. Everything else after that is just. Yeah. But, yeah, that was that was pretty much when things turned around for me, too, was right around that time. Fucking uh, I've said openly before on my podcast, like. I grew up in a family that was a broken family and uh, went on to Section 8 housing and food stamps and all that shit, right? Mm. But uh, I, I persevered and was homeless at like 16 for a little bit. Damn. But was doing uh, – I always knew that because my house, my home life was shit – I had to make something of myself or else I was going to be another fucking loser like that. Mm-hmm. It's not what I wanted to do with my life. I'll just tell, I'll put it that, put it that way. Yeah. Right? You had great Gatsby status. Yeah. yeah I was pretty much you like up at the stars and you knew, you knew we were meant to be great. Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> but pretty much I was like, I want, I want to get out of this, this, you know, government teat lifestyle. Mm-hmm. I want to have something more for myself because in that lifestyle you have you don't really have anything that's yours. It's all something that's been given to you mm. and can be taken away at any point in time. Because government just stops paying the bills and then all your shit's gone. You know what I mean? So mm. um, at, at that point, I was like, I was doing, I always made sure I did good in school. I did a program that Washington State has called Running Start, where you go to college classes and get college credits in high school. So uh, 16, I had my license um had my own car in my own name which um come to find out you're not even legally supposed to be allowed to do under the age of 18 yeah so i don't know how i got lucky enough to have that happen but sounds like a win-win i was set bro yeah (laughs) i was set i was out on my own and uh doing my own thing and uh luckily lived with my mom who was off on her own deep end Mm -hmm. for a couple years long enough to meet uh a homie that set me up to be able to uh, take care of myself. Excellent. You know, and and uh, never got into anything hard. That's good. You know, was a high school kid and partied. Yeah. Just like everybody else did. But, you know, uh, I sold a bunch of weed, smoked a bunch of weed. Yeah. Drank some alcohol. Never did much else that wasn't natural, though. So, mm. you know, grew up like that. Graduated 
with a high school diploma and a couple credits short from a uh, college degree, decided to go back and get a business degree from my two-year college, right? Awesome, man. So I took a whole nother year of accounting economics classes and just was like, fuck it. Got associates in business degree. So I got a two-year degree and was off to the races in my mind, right? Yeah, man. Well, I, I, I was looking at college like a stepping stone. Um, you can either step on the stone and then look for another stone and step on that stone. Or you can step on the stone and say, holy shit, this is just one stepping stone I'm stepping off. Like, why, why would you even call it a stepping stone? So I, I've always found it really interesting why people go back to, to college or why people pursue college or why people do running start. Yeah. If they're only to give up on their, you know, the possibility of continuing that and earning more credits and then locking in that degree. Yeah. Oh, I, I actually got caught in school uh, doing some stupid shit. And they were about to kick me out in my third year. And I threatened them. I was like, you guys haven't given me a degree, right? I was like, I got like two and a half, three months left. I was in my last quarter, right? Mm -hmm. And they were going to expel me. And I was like, how good is it going to look for your record to have a student over here with 30 credits more than he needs for a degree? And you guys haven't issued a degree to him and you expelled him. And they're like, Sounds like, sounds like fuck discrimination you. to me. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> they were like, fuck <laughs> you, finish your classes and get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Checkmate is what it is. Right? I was right? like, so when someone puts that hurdle up in front of me, like, for me, it's just like, say I can't and watch me do it. I love that, man. Right? Good for you, man. <laughs> Way to rock. You gotta be a powerhouse. You can't You can't look at obstacles and, and just let them freaking kick you in the teeth again and again and again. Eventually, you gotta turn your head to the side, take one in the jaw, or block it and get up and fight yeah. you can't just you know sitting down and just taking the hits in life it's never an easy easy thing no no and, but that's the thing is if you're sitting down and taking them it's different than a, a, like attempting to be in the brawl yeah and taking the fight yeah taking it, exactly right? i'm not i'm not gonna be one of those people that just sits there mm -hmm. but that's probably why i'm here to begin with brother 100 <laughs> percent, man 100 percent. and i love that you you studied something that you were interested in um obviously you have a, a fiery passion for for financial literacy financial fitness financial exercise however it, you know anyone wants me to describe it but yeah pretty much you you want to make money and you want to know how to make more money with yep. your money that you make and how not to run out of that shit. well that's not even financial literacy in itself okay well, that's, what, how would you that's wealth it? creation right it's there. wealth creation yeah financial literacy to me would be knowing what money is, knowing how it exists, why it exists, how to use it, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people don't know what the fuck they have nor how to use it. Okay. So if you know those few things, if you have a background of money, then you're going to be able to have an understanding of it and how you can use it. How like Having an understanding of something enables you to be able to use it and utilize it beyond just what the purpose is for. Hell yeah. Right? Like... I can see a screwdriver and I know how to use it. I can also use it as a pry bar because I know how to use it safely, mm -hmm. right? And a I can stick. also use it as a, a chisel. I could yep, turn it upside down and use it as a small like hammer. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like just because I know what a screwdriver is, I know what I can do with it. Someone who doesn't know what a screwdriver is is going to look at it and be like, the fuck do you expect me to do? <laughs> Stab somebody? <laughs> Stab somebody? Oh, my goodness. And that, that definitely takes back to the probie days looking at some of the people I, I came in a trade with. Um, so you're starting off your life. You, you just got your degree. Yeah. Your BA is correct. I think it's AB. AB. Man, BA. I didn't go to college. I didn't go to college, man. I didn't go to college. That's what it is right here. Cause I don't even, I, I don't have any college literacy. So I, I definitely think it's very interesting that you continued, you know, on that path of, of trying to be successful financially. What were your immediate goals leaving college? Immediate goals leading, leaving college. Well, the college that I graduated from was nowhere where I expected to be when I graduated college. When I was younger, I wanted to be a lawyer. Mm. So You're I, really good at arguing, I've, I've noticed. Yes. Yeah. I thought I was going to go to either Harvard or Stanford, and I would be graduated from one of those schools with like an eight-year law degree when I was actually graduating, right? Didn't happen that mm. way. So, you know, from lofty expectations, we don't all rise, but... <laughs> 
<laughs> at that point in my life, dude, I was 19 and my only goal was to try and make more money so I could get out and have my own place, get a nicer car and preferably not have to work because I was still doing my side hustle at that point in time. Yeah. So, you know, I was I was doing that. I never really did that to make a lot of money. I did it to more to smoke a lot and have some money just to take care of myself. Yeah. But at that point, it was like I was a just, hobby at that point. I was just trying to party for a little bit, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like just chilling. And then uh, I actually ended up my mom and stepdad kind of mended things for a little bit. And uh, I was living with another family who I didn't really want to live there anymore. The situation was weird and mm. so i i actually moved back in with my mom and stepdad and all my siblings at like 19 okay. and so at that point like they were on section eight still still getting food stamps still all that shit right so i was just like fuck it i'm gonna go live here take advantage of the situation that's presented itself for me to be able to have room and board essentially for free mm-hmm. and be back with my family all together like it had been six or seven plus years since all my siblings and mom and stepdad had all lived together. Mm. So I was like, fuck it. I'll go back. Yeah. Give it another try. Right. Give it the old college try. Give it the old college try. I just graduated college. I could try that way now. Yeah. Pretty much, man. <laughs> so and family's never easy, man. I, there's so, it's so often that I hear about broken household and the, the stigmas surrounding it. And also the, the reality of what the effect it has on the kids. A lot of people are surprised when when children don't want to be around what they've known before, and and I think that it's it's obviously you know as a parent you're gonna be like oh you know my kids don't want to be around me or whatever, or you can look at a different a different perspective. My kid is trying to set healthy boundaries and find their happiness, and it, it's never it's never easy to, to to deal with anyway. Like especially for the kid, what's what's going through the kid's mind that they don't want to be around? That's what that's a big question in itself. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's going to put scars on any individual. For me, like, I mean, I was never, never got along a whole bunch with my stepdad when I was younger. Yeah. And so, like, for me, it was like, no, it was no big deal. Mm-hmm. Right. Especially at the time, like, um, looking back, I, I appreciate him for what he tried to do and for what he, he, like, I still am in contact with him. I just went and visited him in Hawaii last week. You're awesome. Right. Like him, him and my mom have been separate, like legally separated for more than a decade. But, um, like, especially back in the day, like I didn't like him very much at all. Yeah. So I was like, I had no qualms. <laughs> they split up, bro. <laughs> like it was not damaging to me in the least. Okay. Right. Well, and, I guess that's. I would. I would say that's good then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and then, um, like, so with, I just really wanted to go back and stay with my brothers and sister, mm. and like they had, if they were mature enough to like they weren't back together but still living together and like cohabitating type of like if they're matured enough to do that it was like i was just like fuck it you know as long as it's not a bad situation that ends up being bad for me i was i was just gonna write it out man yeah so i mean why not why not at that point um so what what were you, you looking to do once you moved back in uh pretty much take advantage of the situation bro like i said well, yeah, but yeah like, well, i wanted to try about, like work and stuff i didn't like really have any objective at that mm-hmm. point in time uh i a buddy that i met in college helped me um get this job and it was like a i would say part-time but it was like less than part-time um it's called contemporary services mm-hmm. and they did live events sure. so you could call them and they'd be like hey we have this event coming up at, on this date do you want to do it from this time to this time and you could say yes or no and it was minimum wage but it was concerts and football games and i so i've done i've done security for so many concerts and most of the time i was backstage security mm-hmm. um a lot of the times um i did a couple seahawks games i saw myself on tv before doing the security stuff um yeah. i did another overnight uh at like one of the at seafair before i did overnights where it was me and another dude sitting on a floor where <sighs> whoever trent dilfer played for after he left us i think it was the dolphins or someone like that came mm-hmm. into town 
And we were just – I was security on the floor where all the football players were staying at. Anybody that got off that elevator, if they didn't look like they were a football player, didn't get off the elevator. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. So, like, it was more of an – it was a – so many fun experiences yeah so i was really just living that up you know what i mean and then i got a girlfriend and i got her on the job with me and then she pretty much like moved up there with me and we were just kicking it and fucking smoking hanging out playing halo halo fucking go go and do security you know what i mean trying to make some money so that we could do whatever right Mm -hmm. do our thing at 19 years old 20 years old right and then the shit hit the fan because he said i was still doing my thing on the side and my stepdad i swear that motherfucker got jealous so he started selling weed and he's a felon right so the f word yeah he brings the cops so he started selling weed and then like he's fucking uh he actually was a drug addict for a long time so he did was on methadone, right? So he started selling his methadone pills, then started fucking selling oxy pills and Percocets, and bought guns. And like I always did it in like the spiral of sales. Yes, yes. I always did it and maintained, like, t- like I said, to the level where I could smoke for free and make a little bit of money. I was mm. never in it to make a shit ton of money, right? And this stupid motherfucker starts buying pounds. And, you know, like hundreds of pills from people from their scripts back when they were giving out 100 Oxy 80s for 30-day scripts and oh, shit yeah. like that. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know please, what I mean? like, please take them. They're free. It's yeah, great. Yeah. So he went off. He, he went off the deep end. Oh, fuck. Yeah. And uh, ended up uh, getting too greedy. Did a controlled buy and fucking got the house raided. Oh, man. Yeah. And I was there. When it happened, luckily just me and like my little sister and my mom were the only ones there. And uh, they let me and my girlfriend leave, actually. It was like they, they did a pre-raid before they raided the house where like just one detective or two detectives came up. And my dumbass sister let them in the house. Oh, boy. And then, you know, they're pretty much like, this we're is the situation, the house, so guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Like, you're fucked. So, Thanks for letting us in. Yeah. Like, uh, do you, what do you want to do? We're going to give you the opportunity because we don't suspect you guys of anything to leave right now if you want to. Be like, mm-hmm. Or you can stay here when we do all of our stuff. Okay. So we, I, uh, I had my safe in my room mm-hmm. and uh, I had a little stack of cash plus a bunch of other. I had some, I had a bunch of fucking stuff in there. Mm-hmm. Bunch of stuff in there. That definitely implicated me as selling. Oh no! Oh boy! <laughs> and I had one little, one little stash of uh, some really good shit that was my personal. So I took that, threw it in the bottom of my garbage can that was right next to it, because I knew they were gonna have they were, have dogs and whatever, yeah. right? They're gonna find the safe. They're gonna think that's where, where the, all the weeds at. Yes. So fucking, they ended up calling me, having my number, and call me like you know a couple like two three hours later. They're like, oh, yeah, um, so we have this safe that we found in your room. Do you want to come open it for us? I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Do I want to right? come open a safe? Yes. Not really. No. No, I don't want to open this safe. So uh, they ended up doing their shit anyways, right? Yeah, they got to crack that jank. Yeah, yeah, they got into it and fucking uh, caught a charge and uh, ended up going to court and my stepdad let me go all the way into the fucking courtroom and they did the right thing and claimed responsibility for everything. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was pretty much just like, he was letting me hold on to his weed because I smoke and just for holding on to it, he would let me smoke some for free. That's what I pretty much said. Right. Right. Let alone the like almost thousand dollars of $1 bills that I had saved up. Cause that was my thing was like, I saved up any ones that I got from any sales that was my savings account. Oh boy. And a fucking and so a bunch of other shit that you know what I mean? Like there was some cool shit I had in there that I lost. But uh I that was that was a fucking life changer, man. Yeah, like so. it's not it's never fun to have a bad interaction with the police and 
uh, the police, 99% of the interactions you're going to have with them are bad. They're having a lot of bad interactions with people on a regular basis. It's easy for them to get jaded. But I don't know anybody who would have called. I don't know any human being who would have called and asked to open the safe. Like that. That's a no. I don't want to open the safe. Right? The safe. Yes. You, I, yes, I'd love to open the safe. No, I have, I have my drugs and 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 profit money in there. Yeah. Um. And love, love to crack it. Yeah. Let me just come open that for you guys. I don't think so. <laughs> Not, today. Not today, Satan. You got to work for it. Right. Suck at it. Uh, <laughs> oh man. That, that definitely brings me back to a, to a whole lot of memories I've had in my life. I, I always wish that I would never accidentally say that I'd change anything that happened to me ever in my life. So every time I look back, I'm like, damn, I learned a lesson from that. Like I can look back right now and say, I'm never doing that shit again for a lot of things. Yeah. Um, I definitely would never use a safe to store drugs in, I would say. I made mistakes. Not one that's easily visible. That's for damn sure. Not one easily visible. Yeah, look, look at no. I'm saying looking back for myself. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's one thing I would change. Yeah. Uh, is any any amount of drugs whatsoever. Yeah, that's not. That's... I've, I've been a I've been a pretty good kid for a while now, so yeah. I'm pretty comfortable saying that. Yeah, I saw I definitely sold drugs and I acted pretty reckless. Yeah, 100. percent A lot of people do in high school, man. It's like I think it's normal, unless you're Mormon. Mm. <laughs> and then you have to wait till after you leave your parents' house, and then you just go fucking crazy. What? <laughs> is, that what is that what your Mormon friends did? Yeah, that's what they all did. I had a Mormon friend that was taught that black people, you can pray to have them become white. Really? Yes. I guess there was this video that, that used to spew that hate shit. How, uh, so how long did you know this kid for? I knew him for like a week. A week? Okay. I didn't want to be around his parents. I didn't yeah. want to like ex- ex- explore their like friendship and relationship yeah, and shit, right? You. No, if his parents are telling that. You should be like, you motherfuckers should have stopped praying for me a long time ago. Yes, I know. I'm only I, it only halfway worked, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Look what you did to Look me. What you did to me. It definitely wasn't the fact that my mom was like, no, it was you guys. Oh, thank you, thank you. Do you guys tired to use and thank him for, yeah. for half the job? Yeah. Maybe let's come back and finish it. Or is that, or is that Satan? Who knows? Yeah. Nobody knows. But yeah, man. <laughs> Fuck it. I love I love finally someone with some joke. I love it, man. I I uh I always get cracked up when people try to tiptoe around the, the comedy we have. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 It's natural to be funny. And it, the more we water down sense of humor, so like, I, I get saying some offensive shit is one thing, right? Yeah. But don't be a sensitive little bitch and just, just ask for, yeah. You know, oh, you know, I got offended for somebody. Shut up. I 100%. Let's agree. have some fun. Let's yes. roll the dice. You know, let's say some risque stuff. You know, why not? I'm the person who said some stupid shit in the HR meeting at work that made the lady who was given the HR sexual presentation look at me be like, uh, yeah, that's me. I freaked out during our our last HR meeting because it pretty much, they were preaching anti-white male rhetoric, right? And I was like, you know, I stood up and I said, you know, I get, I get the whole thing that there's people in the world that are racist, but I haven't seen any, if we're, this is, we're about representation. Representation. Yeah. We're about inclusion and diversity right now. Yeah. I don't see anybody but straight white men being freaking <laughs> called slandered, out. Right? slandered in every single video. Get can we give them some grace? Hey. You know what? I think we. I think we. They deserve a pat on the back. I walked around the room and I started patting people on the back really softly. And say, you know what? You yes. deserve a pat on the back for being white. It's okay to be white. And I Thank did it for you. everybody. I stopped the whole meeting yeah. to do it. And I said that um I, I'd like to to hold, do a a formal complaint. Really? Yes, I wanted to form, Good. Uh, host a complaint. Good. Because uh, I felt like half of me was being uh, called out. <laughs> <laughs> and I really, I really did feel that way. So you know, I, um, I don't, I don't, I don't think that uh, racial. We can get rid of racism, not by not talking about it, no, but by treating it like you need to be treated, not just flipping it around with a mirror on the person who used to be the one distributing it. Come on, man. I know. I, here's the thing is I think that like if you don't have the people who go off on, on that go off on that shit mm-hmm. that it's not it becomes less funny so like us censoring it makes it so that it's like more stigmatized mm-hmm. right when you have people doing that all the time it's very it's it's easier to understand but it makes it so that people are fucking pussies mm-hmm. yeah it's stupid like if you don't it's like we are becoming desensitized to the comedy of calling out what is truly bullshit. Yes. Right. 
because that's what comedy has always really been about is pointing out the truths and trying to get us to all understand it in a funny way. Yes, and I think it's important. It is so important. How many how how shitty would life be without Dave Chappelle's hating ass episodes? How oh, shitty man. would would life be if we didn't like I wouldn't want to watch Tim Pool if he didn't have some funny people on there from time to time. I wouldn't want to listen to Joe Rogan talk about the things with a straight face all the time. I I have no. some episodes on here where I talk about straight face things the whole time and it kills me. It kills my my sense of humor. I have to have I have to have some type of joke. I got some fun, some laughs. Hey, I'm all about having fun, bro. My my motto has always been at least at least for work. If you ain't having fun with what you're doing or who you're doing it with, you're doing the wrong fucking thing. Yeah, Travis, and that's Travis work. Said the same shit. That's work. Mm-hmm. How do you think I feel about real life, bro? Oh man, <laughs> that's, I'm it's all about just worse. trying to. Keep yeah, it, keep kick, it, kick it and just enjoy life. I Life can be such a beautiful thing. And when we are able to tap in and decide to keep the good times rolling, we can enjoy it. But if we if we put the blinders on or put the, the sensors on and say, okay, well, you know, I don't think it's okay to, to watch Family Guy because they said one thing. It, it's supposed to be a fucked up comedy. It is exactly the fucked up comedy. And if it's not going to be the fuck of comedy, what is? If that's not it, then you, it's not what want, it is. You anymore. want you want real racist people to come out and just think it, and then just think they're the only person out there saying rambunctious shit. No, no, no. definitely not. I think no. we can. I think we can definitely do a better job of that in the future. Are you thinking about making a podcast? Spotify has a platform that lets you make one, and if I can figure it out, you definitely can too. You can create your own content all in one place for free with zero hangups, and even earn money as soon as you get started. Spotify lets you record and edit episodes from your phone or computer so you can go mobile just like I enjoy to do. My favorite thing about it is that you can create video episodes if you wish and upload them to wherever podcasts are heard. You can even set up subscriptions or if you're like me, listen to support options for listeners to help you grow. I 10 out of 10 recommend the Spotify for Podcasters app or, you know, why don't you just step over to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your own podcast. I definitely had a very interesting journey getting into the trade. Like, obviously, you know, my, my listeners definitely already heard the story about me coming out of the military. I didn't even know elevator workers existed. I'm like, someone does that shit? Like, I really said those exact same words when I was sitting in the middle, <laughs> in, just off the coast of the Middle East. Yeah. I'm talking to my wife on the phone. She, I thought it was like an emergency phone call when somebody died. She's like, no, you could come home and work at elevators. And I'm like, elevators. So... Why the fuck would I leave my job right now? I have everything going on. I'm the boss. I'm learning new things every day. I'm, I get to decide to be better and treat people with more respect every single day. I'm learning so much about how to be myself. It's like, well, what about fifty dollars an hour? And I said, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Looks yes. like I'm working on elevators, right? Yes, yes, you are. Little did I know, I, I'm afraid of heights. So there it is. <laughs> That's what we have the rails for, bro. We got the rails for, but yeah, but there weren't there weren't rails on the cars. I was working at Fujitex, man. Yeah. Oh no, no, it was rough, man, for the first little bit. But I definitely enjoy the blue collar field. What What do you think separates the blue collar industry from the white collar industry? Because a lot of my friends work in offices, and they'll never they they hate like they hate work with yeah. wrenches. They they can't even do it. Mm. So having worked both, let me just say first off, I I have where to go. Yeah, I I hate being on the edge. Oh fuck! Right, so like I get you with being afraid of heights mm-hmm. on a car that has no railing. Like I don't want to be by the edge. Mm-hmm. So I get you, brother. I yeah, I, you. I, I fucking <laughs> I, one hand on the crosshead. Like my knees didn't want to move. I was yeah. I, got, I had this nervous sometimes. Oh, uh, not that bad. Oh, not that bad. But I get what you're saying, right? Oh, I was a little bitch, man. <laughs> I bet. The first couple times, I'm now I'm now I'm guessing you're not like mm-hmm. that, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, when I first started, it was. It was it was some shit the first time, but you just get through it, right? Mm-hmm. And so, on to your question, what separates blue collars from a white collar worker? Because having done both, I've obviously have had both mindsets, right? Um, I think the one of the things that it can be, depending on what you do for your blue collar work um, and how you do it, is the mindset of settling, mm. right? Um, a lot of white collar workers settle into jobs because it's just what they went to school for oh. or that's what they could land and they didn't even go to school for it. Right. Like it's just what you, it's what's available that you're okay at. Mm-hmm. Like when I was applying for jobs, working at the bank, I was looking for 
things that I knew how to do already, that I had the qualifications to be able to do, right? And when I came to doing blue collar work, you have to have a completely different mindset because you have to take a look at what your problem is that's in front of you and what you can do to create a solution. Right. Yeah. You, you have to take on things that you don't know how to do and figure out how the fuck to make it work on the spot, on the spot and convince your boss to give you the time to do it without thinking you suck <laughs> and pay you and pay <laughs> and you, pay you right? ridiculous amounts of money. At the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it's a completely different mindset to go from that to that. Mm. And just what I said is so small, right? Because, but it is the mindset because when you're doing a uh, white collar job almost all the time, unless you are on a construction site doing white collar work, you are in a nice comfy, cozy building Mm -hmm. or an office or you're at home. Your comfort zone. Yeah, dude. You and the screen, baby. Yeah. Like you could do your own thing. Even if you're doing retail, you're in a store, right? Like you're dealing with other people and you have the opportunity to make the day. Like I always tell people like, make it a great day. Because you make it what it is, right? And mm. when you're doing those kinds of jobs, like you make your day what it is. Like you can enjoy doing what you want, or you just fucking suffer through with what you accepted, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, human beings aren't meant to to wake up one day crying and shitting themselves, <laughs> get, get raised by a parent they're always yelling, you know, this little pro, probationary apprentice in life, not knowing what you're doing, go through your teenage years have a bunch of sex and make a bunch of poor decisions on drugs, get drunk way too many times, po- get, finally settle down with somebody they're unhappy with, uh, work a nine to five mm-hmm. at, with a college degree they went, they went to mm-hmm. and die. That's not, that's not it. I, I hope that everybody is able to find their own version of happiness. Yeah. That can't be it. Right. Mm-hmm. But it has to be more. You can, the thing is like, if you have this people that have the same types of mindsets in both careers, because you have people who, aren't willing to learn is what it comes down to probably. Right. Because if you aren't willing to learn, then you aren't willing to try new things. You aren't willing to get ahead. Right. You can't, you can't improve yourself if you weren't, aren't willing to learn. Mm. And the people who are willing to just stay working at as a manager of McDonald's for fucking 15 or 20 years, they don't want to do shit with themselves. They set, they settle knowing that that's what their lot in life is going to be. Mm-hmm. And some there's a lot of people who have that mentality, right? There's people in the blue collar trades who are like, fuck it, I'm just going to be a laborer, right? It's hard ass work. I don't get paid shit, but I have like no responsibility. Mm. I'm never going to get yelled at. Never. No one's going to expect nothing of me. If I don't show up for work, it's no big deal. Safety zones and comfort zones are just really dead zones. Is that why kind of why you enjoy uh, you know the crypto world and getting into <laughs> different things like that? I, I want to say real quick, he is in no way, shape, form, or suing point a financial advisor. He is sharing his personal experience. So if you don't like what he says, it's okay. Um, and if you if you listen to what he says, that's uh, between you and the Lord. All I would advise you to do is listen to me if you want to lose money. Yes. <laughs> I love it, man. I if you're it. ready to lose all of your money, do everything I tell you right now. Yes, it's a perfect, it's a perfect disclaimer. I love it, man. <laughs> but is that why? Like, seriously, is that why you like it, or or have you? What what ultimately drove it to you? Because obviously, we try to have as many forms of income. Yeah, I went back yeah. in 2015. You, the average billionaire, had seven forms of continuous income. Not all of them had to be residual, but you had to work on those motherfuckers every day. Yep. Um, I know that me right now, I have seven forms of income, but not all of them are residual, and I have to work on them every single day. Uh, and that's between me and my partner, though. But together, if we had 14 forms of income and we worked on them every single day, I think we might be able to make the millionaire uh, standpoint in the next five years. But yeah, there is the economy. There is inflation. Yeah, there is yeah. struggle. Are we refinancing? Did I pay off my credit cards like we did this morning? Bro, yeah, if all you, the things. So if you have, if you have 14 sources – of income between the two of you, if you, or even if you just say, let say the two of you get together and have 10 sources of income, mm-hmm. right? If you make $10,000 average off each of those sources of income, 
that's a hundred thousand dollars that you have, mm-hmm. right? Pain, That'd be pretty badass, huh? Not too bad. I gotta start my OnlyFans for my feet. I really do. I'm I, really slacking. I've been telling my girl, and she's like, I can't believe you want other people to look at my feet. Someone hit me up. Someone hit me up last night on my Instagram. They were trying to first it started with the OnlyFans, and then uh, I'm sorry for the listeners here. It is what it is. Uh, started with Only <laughs> OnlyFans. He was like, and then he wanted to pay. He wanted to to pay me for a piece of my shit. You got those already. All right, bro. I I was creeped the fuck out. I mean, it is what it is. It like is, I got I, right, people look, are people. Yes. I didn't know. I, like that is that was creepy as hell. That is so creepy. But is he still gonna listen to you? And, Answer me one one word. Okay. Is he still gonna listen to you? Yes. Whether you sell it to him or not. I hope so. Sell him that shit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, oh. I, I I honestly haven't even told my honey yet. I'm probably gonna tell her tonight. Like I am totally bewildered by some of the. There's, com- I, I've had gonna, some, there's you know, weirdos out there, no matter what, and they're gonna be weird. Yeah, and, and being, being in fitness, I've been I've been offered to be someone offered to fly me out to New York to like when I was like 212, and I was yeah. way way above what my musculature was was at when I was you know I'm just a little ectomorph, a little skinny fuck. I was like 125 pounds when I started, and then I was 212. This guy was flew, offered to fly me out to New York so I could flex in front of him. While he does whatever the fuck he wants to do, and then fly me back home, and I was like, "You are blocked, bitch. Right. <laughs> you're blocked. That's different. You're blocked. You're blocked. You're blocked. That's they are pretty much like come to my murder cave. No, <laughs> I'm not doing it. Okay, I'm not gonna be the next, the next little light skin, right. light skin little little devil sitting there in in a foreign country, uh, being being auctioned off." Like in the movie Taken, hell no, no. you gonna be fucked up. No, but but the, the requests are just weird, man. Yeah, well, the, the fact that there is a, a thing called uh, a coworker told me about this thing called FeetFinder.com. dot com. Feet I Bro. write this. Yeah, I'm about I'm about I'm about to really like, start selling feet pics, man. Dude, do it. That's a good form of income. I, t- I told my girlfriend like if they if, if they see your face one time because it's your profile picture and that's all you give them and everything else is feet pics, fuck it. I'm not giving. You can them be my, fully my close. You be. F- yeah, I gotta have the fish eat the little things off the bottom of my feet, probably to make them make them all soft and shit. Whatever. The fuck. <laughs> I don't know, man. I ain't doing this shit. I'm just here to fuck around and joke. I'm just here to joke. Do right? you to make money? All right. So that's <laughs> that's the thing. Like you're saying, I'm gonna skip that for me, right? uh, I'm gonna take out, the L outside of <laughs> <laughs> outside of feet pics. Outside of feet pics, yes, <laughs> you have to have other sources of income. So I, I'm always out there looking for other for ways to make money. Mm. Right? The woman's always uh, asked me. She's like. When is enough money enough? You're always just gonna be on the hustle. Ever since I met you, because she met me when I was selling, she's mm-hmm. like, "You've always been on the hustle." I'm like, "The fuck you think you got with me for?" Because I'm a hustler, baby. Oh, you know what? <laughs> Come on, my guy. I love it, man. There's oh, a song right? by Drake called "Broke Boys" that came out. It's like, yeah. "Broke boys, I don't talk to broke boys. Mm. I don't fuck with broke boys. I don't talk to broke boys." I'm laughing my ass off. Spitting out my my, I was drinking at the time when I first heard. It. I lost my shit. It is hilarious because he's talking. Tell the truth. Yeah, he's talking about people who just want to settle. Talk about people who pretend they have things they don't like. How great is it that we have TV shows to keep with the Kardashians? What would happen if we just kept up with ourselves? Yeah. It's a crazy thought, right? Yeah. What would happen if we if we loved ourselves? What happens if you were satisfied with what you had? Mm. You know that the beauty. There's a lot of beauty in that song. We all want what we ain't got. Oh, and it always true. makes me want to tear up and cry like a little, so like a little true. Bitch, dude. Just even those words are just true in themselves. We always mm-hmm. want what we ain't got. So the forms of income, like have a nine, because feet pick would be the ten, and I'm gonna get. I'm not gonna do it because I've already I've already got weird ass requests coming in my shit anyways. Hey, but like you. I definitely got to work on these, that these forms of income. Yes. Yeah. Um. Do you think that it would be, if I had just ten forms of income, you think that would be a, a positive thing to do? I think having more than five already is an excellent thing. Right? Um, I have a question about tax brackets involving these things because okay. you know you got different forms, tax forms. Everyone's yeah. like, "Don't oh, they're gonna bump you up in a tax bracket." I think that is something that's literally instilled into society and humanity yeah. to make us be comfortable with being broke, broke yeah. or bottom scale. Do you agree with that statement? Uh, I think what it is is. It's someone who it's coming from someone who doesn't have a lot already, mm. so they don't want any of it taken because they're they're scared of they're scared of the future. Well, it also it's to help in because when you don't have a lot, you kind of have to kind of be greedy, 
Mm. Right? You have to be miserly. Yes. Frugal. However you want to put it. You have to defend what you have because you have to support yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I've right? been there, man. I've been there. That's I why I, that's why I feel like I need to do this. I have I've I told you already, I've been homeless before, bro. Like, Does do you think that gave you a competitive edge or a feeling of fear that you just can't shake where you have to 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 keep chasing this dragon, which is being okay financially? No. Or, I, or you just or I you mean, just enjoy it, the idea. I want to get to the, I personally want to retire by forty five. Oh, I'm gonna retire by forty. High five. Come on. Fuck yeah, bro. Get there. Should we? I'm done. I'll wait forward. till we're off of here, but I have some ideas I'd love to, to yes, connect with you, you on, can. man. Yes. There's a couple of my friends who want to retire at the same time. Yeah, none of you guys can hear. What if it was just all five of us and yeah. we all just retire together? We just do like some drunk, some drunk cheers and then yeah. we just decide to be done. I'm done. 100%. I, I fucking love it. So, so 45? Yeah. So my goal is to retire by 45, which obviously um, you cannot do just making as much money as we make. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, I, my girlfriend hasn't worked since either of my kids were born and my daughter is 13. Wow. So Congratulations. I didn't even know you had children. Yeah. I knew you had an elliptical, but I didn't know you had kids. <laughs> a son and a daughter. That's right? Well, congratulations. So they're, both, they're both in the double digits. And... Uh, so like I'm saying, like she hasn't she hasn't worked, so it's been me always, mm -hmm. right? So I've always had to have some extra way to make enough money because we like to do shit. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I I said it the other day um, on my on, I think on my podcast, like people in my house don't want, right? Like that's not the life we live. That's that's what I wanted to provide. Now what I would like to provide is that without having to work. So if, yeah. if, cause I'm, I've always lived with frugally and miserly without a lot of money. So I've been, I've learned how to, when I was young, be satisfied with what I had. Damn. Right. Mm -hmm. So I want to get to the point where it's like, I'm satisfied with what I have and I have enough money. That's a residual income, like continuously coming in to be able to not have to work and live at this level. Pretty much that I'm at right now, maybe just a little bit high, higher, right? My goal is to get hit five million and retire, five million after taxes and retire, and put enough into whatever money high yielding account that's safe that nets me 150 after taxes mm. every year, continuously, right? Yeah. After taxes and fees and all that, I could live 150 a year. Live off that as long as inflation doesn't hit crazy ass numbers. I mean, as long as I think, as long as there's like a different regime in office in the next couple of years when the election's here, I really hope that something changes, man. Because damn, we'll see how things go. Things are things are it's, it's a definitely a rickety thing. Yeah, it makes me nervous. The uh, market is very teetery tired right now. Volatile right? is I think yeah. a good word to call it. Yeah, very volatile and all. It's everything's. There's so much shit that could tip it in one direction or the other. So it's it's not a game that you really want to play unless you're a well informed individual. So you have to be well informed with your your podcast, the Prime Minds podcast over there on YouTube. Yeah. Um, I think you're you said that earlier that you might be talking about and I have an idea of moving to some other platforms as well, which I'm super excited for, of course. Yep. yep. What's the idea with this crypto thing? Because yeah, I I think that I'll, I hear a lot of negativity about it by people who are very impatient. Uh, from what I observed, <laughs> I think impatience and yeah. unhappiness are, are, you know, tied into each other for mm -hmm. a long time, especially when it comes to investments at all. Yeah. You people want the immediate return, just like they want the immediate return with fitness. Yes. And just like they want the immediate return with drugs, which they can usually get. But dr right. not everything hits like freaking cocaine, right? Nope. The, the, the industry, you have to take time and patience for it to deliver what you hope for that. Yep. Well, uh, crypto is... Um, proving more and more every day to be just like stocks they do the same things at same you can hit them with the same technical analysis as stocks right because what they are is they are an investment in an idea and that's what a company is it's just an idea when you when it boils down to it mm. right people performing the actions to continue this idea that they trademarked at that point in time right so um these coins each represent whether it's the idea like with um, Bitcoin of the Bitcoin network, the blockchain uh, with Ethereum, the Ethereum blockchain, 
um, or all these coins on these individual blockchains, they represent a company because that company is trying to put out a coin because they are trying to do something, right? And so you can look at these coins like individual stocks into each of these companies, but that can be broken down into the billionth of a coin of, of a stock, right? Mm -hmm. If you have, if you're, if you're trading um, on some platforms, like there's a $5 minimum, yeah. right? But beyond that, I could buy $5 in a penny or I could buy $27,000 worth of something, right? Mm. If I have the money. So when you look at cryptocurrency and crypto coins, people are, are scared um, and they for some portions of cryptocurrency, yeah, you should be scared. Yeah, see, I know, right? and it's the darkness, yep. you know. But, I'm scared of the dark to this day. That's why I got a gun with a flashlight on it, right? Same, right? As long as there's a little bit of light in my eyes, it's just I'm okay. Yeah. But still, I look into that darkness, like especially out in the woods, I'm scared as fuck. Yeah. I don't know what's out there. After the Blair Witch Project, I've never been the same, man. Gun with a light on it. <laughs> Keep it handy. Yes, brother. Keep it handy. Keep the bang on the hanger. Gotta, yeah. have, gotta happen. But, uh, yeah, so... Uh, cryptocurrency is essentially if you look at it like what I just explained is each individual coin is like buying an individual stock into whatever company published that coin you realize you have the opportunity right now to be investing in these these are our generation dot com companies mm. so this is financial advice right here if you think that the cryptocurrency space and the web three space is going to go away and fade it's not it's faster than the u.s government they can't even tax it and financial advice, <laughs> and financial advice. yes and, um, and uh and, and what's crazy about the crypto the crypto world is you just said that there are modern day dot coms yes you're talking about apple yes google yes facebook yes pornhub yes you know all the all the things all yes. the things that that our major businesses. I think mm -hmm. I, I was doing a, a research essay in high school. I I was ranking the number one most consistent thing out there, and it's the porn industry because people it has a, a need that a lot of people cannot fill, which is to feel good enough. Crypt having money can often make you feel good enough as well. So I think that there's a big correlation between financial being financially successful and feeling good enough, especially for the young men who are raised in households being told that you have to be a provider. And I think that's it's damaged. It's dam definitely damaged me in my life with that, with that feeling. I cannot stop moving forward. I have to do this. Yeah. So, but also it's my main driver. So am mm -hmm. I really mad? I don't know. Would you be where you are today if that wasn't the case? Mm -hmm. And if it, if you wouldn't, are you upset with that? Are you upset about it? Well, I'm upset that my project got me an F, even though it was bulletproof. Like it was all great research, and I yeah. had the source and everything about the stati analytic analytical statistics. And so well, I was kind of pissed off, but it is it is a booming industry, and it's something that is consistent as well. Yeah. Um. Do you think that there is going to be a point where people are more comfortable with the idea of crypto cryptocurrency and it being oh yeah you know stable? Oh yeah. So once the general public under like. Bitcoin mm -hmm. going to $60,000 didn't happen for a reason, yeah. right? The people, household names, knowing what Dogecoin was, like those are, these are all the first steps, right? These are all the, the very first names that people are hearing about. Um, Yuga Labs is probably one of the more famous now. They're the ones who have the Board Ape Yacht Club NFTs. Um, other than the main blockchains, um, Matic, which is Polygon Network. Yeah, I know Polygon. AVAX, which is the Avalanche Network. Um, I mean, there's all of the big coins, Cardano, Algo, Sand. Oh, it's funny. Like, these are all tech companies, though, right? That's the one thing that you have to understand if you are getting into cryptocurrency is every one of these coins is representing a company that's involved with technology in some way, shape, or form. And usually it's um, online technology or computer related, right? like personal computer use or business computer use related. Mm. So these are, it's, it's like a new age NASDAQ for was what all of these. Um, and, and if you, if you really want to get technical about it, they're called centralized exchanges mm -hmm. or sexes, C E X. Okay. Um, if you really get into cryptocurrency, you'll easily get into, um, 
DEXs, which are decentralized exchanges. But what that requires is knowledge enough to be able to open your own crypto wallet, mm -hmm. right? One hundred percent, and that and that can you you have to you have to make sure you're up to speed because crypto changes just mm -hmm. like the stock market does rapidly. Yep. Do yep. you think that there's some good supporting platforms? Like I know that uh, Acorns is one that's usually uh, talked about pretty often. I I personally use Acorn. I think it does a good job. Uh, it's like hands off investing. I don't care if they if they make a dime off of me. Yeah. Um. As long as as long as I see I see a return, and I think that the ideology is going to change in the future for me once oh, yeah. I once I hear more more wealth. Yeah. And have more residual income, and I don't have to stress about what the next Las Vegas trip that I, is is going to be paid for. Yeah. By, but or anything like that. But do you think that there's going to be more stability with supporting cryptocurrency programs, kind of like Acorns, but for crypto? So. It, there's a huge disparity in what you're talking about mm. right now because all of these centralized exchanges, um, they are what's called a custodial wallet. You have someone who is pretty much your delegate who is controlling your wallet for you, mm -hmm. right? You don't actually have access to be able to take that wallet and move it to another application to see those funds. Yes. So when you don't have custody over your funds, you can, you have no ability to be able to move them if the custodian says that you're not allowed to move them. Yes. Right? So I'm rolling the dice with my eyes blindfolded behind my back. No, you're rolling your dice with someone holding your hand. Oh. Someone okay. uh, you're rolling the dice but someone has their hand on you on your wrist the whole way through. Okay. Okay. Um and those aren't your dice. They're their dice is really what it comes down to. It's just your funds. Your funds. Okay. Right? Um, it's just like a bank. It's just, And it, the easiest way to understand all of cryptocurrency and all of that kind of stuff is the each blockchain is an individual public ledger of that any coins that are represented on that blockchain. Right? And what these centralized exchanges, like what Acorn and Robinhood and all these... Um, Crypto.com and Coinbase and all of these places are giving you by allowing you to make a um, wallet on their platform is they're saying we'll take your funds and hold them in account for you and say we'll purchase these coins <clears throat> and say that they're yours, but we're really holding on to them okay. for you. Okay. Until you withdraw it and ask to have it back in your bank account. Until you withdraw it and they allow you to withdraw it and it goes back into your bank account. For now. It's just, it's one different type of bank account, right? Mm -hmm. One's in US dollars that you can withdraw in fiat currency or spend on a credit card. The other one is in a coin that you have to transfer into fiat through a bank. Mm -hmm. But they're the exact same thing. Okay. Exact same thing. But when you have these centralized exchanges, you could have something like what's called a run on the bank. And they could sh close their doors and say you can't withdraw your funds. Or you could have a situation like what just happened recently in the news with a comp uh, exchange that was not allowed in, I don't think they were allowed in the U.S., but big elsewhere in the world called FTX. Oh, yeah. I've heard about them. Yeah, I bet you have. Yeah. That guy a lot of people got, have heard uh, about them. Swapped up by the feds, extradited. His girlfriend ratted him out. I guess that, that PP <clears> wasn't <throat> hitting too good. And, he, you know... <clears throat> Uh, neither was the money, I guess. No, I don't know. No, well, there's plenty of money for damn there's sure. Plenty but, of money for damn so sure. So some wasn't hitting hard. <laughs> they got fired. They got fired. Uh, but yeah, so so that happened, and anybody who was invested in that, they were fucked. And instantly, their shit went to zero. They came after everybody. Tom Brady, everybody. Yep. And then, or you could what happened, have what happened to Luna, and they had a, what was called a stable coin, something that you could convert into U.S. dollars. Or sell for U.S. dollars, specifically to transfer back to your bank account. And someone exploited something in their coding and made a fuck ton of money, but it completely crashed the coin. And people literally committed suicide because they lost so much money because they couldn't, they either their centralized exchange wouldn't allow them to, or when they went to go to a de decentralized exchange where they have custody of their wallet and their coins, they couldn't sell it for anything close to what it was worth or couldn't sell it at all because no one was buying it. Some people put, invested their life savings in it. I've, I've realized that I, I think the craziest thing I've ever saw, somebody lost $60,000 of their life savings 
with um with a coin that I'm not obviously not gonna name for I don't want to get in trouble with you know lawsuits and shit. So um yeah, but seeing sixty thousand dollars disappear in a mm-hmm. volatile market, people think that it's not like the stock market and it's bulletproof and everything else. Do you think that it will be in the future? No. Never will be. It's because the stock market's volatile as well. Yeah, it's just the same it's the exact same thing. Everything's a slippery slope, you're everything's t- icy icy ground. Here, the here's the thing is you're taking a risk and investing in a company. Mm-hmm. People go buy these, they're called altcoins or shit coins or whatever you want to call them of what could be some, what could be something could be, and you're getting it for less than pennies on the dollar per coin. Right. And you're hoping it goes to the fucking moon. To the moon. Win win Lambo, yo. Yeah. Right. Like there's so many memes that are out there for people who are in the space, but like the, the thing is you're only going to find a couple of those there's the diamonds in the rough man they there are all 90 plus percent of them are going to fail Mm. but just like any new business like i think the statistics are two-thirds or three-quarters of new businesses fail within the first five years yes right i believe i believe i read the same statistic yeah so it it's it's never going to be a for sure thing okay it's never going to be a safe bet right it will be safer when they have more security um, for decentralized wallets. That's the big thing. Because the centralized wallets, they're always going to have control of your... It's The saying is, not your keys, not your coins. Which means if you don't have the keys to your wallet, which is your passcode, your seed phrase, your key store, whatever you ha- whatever it's called on your chain, then you don't own those coins. Someone else does. So how does that transcribe into the the message you look to deliver with the podcast you guys host? So the podcast I host is called Prime Minds. Yes, no, I love it. Follow at, them on YouTube. Yep, at Prime Minds Pod or on Twitter, um, Bitly forward slash Prime Minds Podcast. Um, Prime Minds on YouTube. Follow us, bitches, please. Please, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'll make sure to put all the links down in the description for every listener so you don't have to write anything down. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate that much love. Um, yeah. But yeah, so we actually got together um, because I got into this thing called Web3, which cryptocurrency is like the base of Web3, right? Okay. It is the blockchains that are behind cryptocurrency, Bitcoin and Ethereum and all of the stuff that comes in with that polygon avalanche. Um, so smart people shit. You yeah, well, kind of smart people. Kind of smart people. I mean, you have to at least, like, it's always put out there, like, really, it's the wild, wild west. Web3 is the wild, wild west. Cryptocurrency, when you get out of the centralized exchanges, is very dangerous because you are in control of everything. You are your own bank now. Mm. Like, it's it's very different. gives you a very different concept because you can easily, you can lose your money like that, man. Like, I, my, I have my podcast co-host lost probably $25,000 worth of NFTs and mm. cryptocurrency in his wallet because of a hack. So, I mean, like it's very dangerous out there, but are then the fucking the crypto trenches. Oh, it's like deep, Chicago deep, bro. I'm into even the newest cutting age shit. Like this stuff called ordinals on Bitcoin that people did. Like it came out th- three weeks ago is when it really popped off. Not even three weeks ago. I was on vacation like the day of two or three days before I went on vacation is when it really popped off in the Damn. public. Yeah. So like I'm I'm deep in there. But um we talk about, you know, the market and the web three gaming for the most part. Um, we do always cover whatever's going on with cryptocurrency and the economy in the US uh, to begin our podcast with. And then uh with Web three, like the big thing for me in Web3 is gaming. I love I love games. I've been a gamer my whole life. Yeah. And uh, so we all met around this game called Champions Ascension. And uh, we made this podcast that was pretty much dedicated to it at first. Um, we've, like from when it originally came out. And uh, this is an NFT game. Um, again, not financial advice. I am invested in it. Like, take it for a grain of salt with whatever I say about it. I, I like it. Obviously, I'm going to say good things about it, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, 
So we've been in it since before what's called a mint. With the NFT, a mint is like the first time something is given out to a person because an NFT is like a, one crypto coin, but it's a personalized coin, right? Mm. So if you had just like, for example, one Ethereum, it would be like you actually had a one Ethereum coin that was its own coin, right? Every single person can have one of those coins, but my Ethereum coin would have the image of the NFT on it. So it's like a home. It's it's yours. Pretty much, yeah. It's individual. It's it's I own it, and it's trackable as its own trackable token on the blockchain. Okay. The thing with uh, each cryptocurrency coin that you buy, whether it's one billionth or one full one or a billion full ones, every single one is tr trackable on the blockchain. Okay. Where it came from, where it's been, every single transaction is trackable through wallets. And on Bitcoin, you can track individual portions of money as well. Mm -hmm. So you're able to split the dollar into millions of hay pennies. Millions. Millions and track each individual one pretty much, right? Okay. So so it, it allows for, for so much more transactions, for much more financial freedom, so much more trading. Oh, yeah. It can definitely, it can definitely build upon the U.S. dollar in itself. Oh, there's so much potential with cryptocurrency because mm -hmm. whole... everything's a direct relation to the u.s dollar right everything's everything's mm -hmm. uh compared in compared to it that's what we see it in priced as but if okay. you were in europe you'd see it priced in euros or if yes. you were in china you'd see it priced in yuan but there is a direct what? correlation between how many how many is, hundredths of a, yeah. of a u.s dollar right is that and here's the here's the only kicker is even if you have a decentralized wallet no matter what, you have to go back through a centralized exchange to be able to exchange that cryptocurrency and to, to get it, put it back into your bank to trade it for fiat currency, mm -hmm. right? Because cryptocurrency is still out there, not really regulated. You know what I mean? Like, it's a black area. It's the wild, wild west still, Okay. right? So you can't just go out and buy something with Ethereum. You can't go out and buy something with Polygon, right? The dumbass who paid ten thousand dollars for, uh, bit, or ten thousand bitcoins for one pizza, regrets that shit when it was at sixty thousand dollars, right? Yeah. So I don't ever <laughs> foresee that really ever being a big thing because who wants to be that guy next, right? Mm. But there, you're always gonna have to go through some medium to exchange those coins into a spendable money. Yeah. Uh, Probably. 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 I see. Right. But so we talk about NFTs, which are, like I said, one individual token on that whatever chain that it's minted on or created on. And this one we are actually used as um, characters in a, in a game. It's a fighting game. Kind of the closest thing um, that most people would understand would be like Mortal Kombat. Right. Okay. Different, slightly different concept. Yeah, um, but it's also directly tied into a process of making money. Yes, because these the people that created it, um, one of they're like the co-founders of MySpace, are the CEOs of the company. The people who are developing this game, all of them have probably more than a hundred years worth of experience in the game development industry. They're all they all are very well, and the company that they can't, they started this at was a billion dollar mobile gaming company who the CEO and COO of that company stepped down from that role as a billion dollar head in started a new company and took all of that whole team and got an additional $32 million in, in funding to continue this project and create this new company to develop this game. So wow. We're, we're pretty excited about it. Yeah. Um, plus it's actually a fun game, right? Like they, uh, they, it, minted in february of last year so it just hit a year old or it's about to hit a year old mm -hmm. you know just hit a year old this last month <clears throat> and so um they actually already have a playable alpha we talk about that um we interviewed all of the developers that as it was being developed um wow we started we're going to be hitting our year anniversary um, we'll have a, we're going to be having a big episode on the 25th of March. Oh shit. What? Yeah. yeah. So a year of our podcast this month, um, which is funny, funnily a day after I hit my eight year anniversary in the trade. 
so i'm pumped right yeah and uh so we're, we're just pushing it like i said we interviewed the, all the developers we've kept up on all of the process of how the game's being developed and all the stuff the way they've interacted with the community because that's a big thing in web3 is like there's there these spaces and these companies that are trying to create themselves and create a community that believes in them and their project and their idea mm. right and that's where a lot of people are trying to focus on on and think that they can make a lot of money on these crypto coins and a lot of money on these nfts is because they think they're going to find a project that actually is going to do something and create like mm. i said in the beginning of this podcast someone that's building something someone that's creating something that's going to make a lot of money right and they, they think that they're going to find that in someone else and they're trying to invest some money in it mm. some people will find those people the next google they will find the next google you just have to be patient and not expect instant money, right? Mm -hmm. Not everybody gets lucky and buys a fucking $500 board ape and then it ends up being worth like $460,000 a year later. Yeah. Not everybody gets that lucky. No. At all. At all. And it's a solid come up, but you got it. What are you going to do with the come up? What are you going to do with the, the money that you made off of it? If, if you're a DJ like I am, you're gonna go buy more NFTs. Then you get the same jackpot, Come bro. On. I know. I know. Yeah. But don't ever listen to anything that I tell you to do unless you want to lose a lot of money, people. Yes. Oh man. <laughs> so, so what do you what do you enjoy the most about doing podcasting? Obviously, you have the host of the people that you work with. Yeah. You know, and obviously, and also the. The people that you have come on they develop games you're tied into as well yeah so everybody that we've actually brought on has been in a project that i'm in um funnily enough uh i do a lot of the recruiting mm -hmm. uh, especially now that we have less members than what we started with i do all pretty much all the recruiting mm -hmm. um so it's always something that i have a, an eye on yeah right and something that i'm always interested in learning and I love learning new shit. Like, if you're not learning, you're you're dying. Yeah, you're not learning, you're not living. That's damn sure. Yep. So, like, you don't have to learn something every day, right? You don't have to do that every day. But it's like, if, if you're not out there trying to better yourself and learn more about even just the littlest things, find something that entertains you and learn more about it, right? Oh, yeah. And so that's what I'm doing. And it's I'm doing it for something that I think I might be able to make some money on. And Absolutely, dude. Like for me, what it really came down to is I got bitched at by the woman that I was spending too much time playing video games. So I got into like I started trying to figure out a way I can make some more money. So I had to work less. Got into cryptocurrency. Got fucking rugged, which means I lost a bit of money on a coin. And then uh, I was like, "Fuck! I'm like, what can I do? How can I play games and make money?" And that's how I found Champions Ascension. And that's what got me into NFTs. And, like, I, I do a little bit of crypto stuff still, but it's mostly NFT-related stuff. <laughs> but it's if you don't understand crypto very well, you wouldn't be able to grasp NFTs as easily. Absolutely. So so to get a full understanding, would they have to travel over to your podcast and, and listen to a couple episodes and get it dialed in? I wouldn't be able to explain we have not put together yet that video. Mm -hmm. um, that is something that I do want to do is put together a video that explains pretty much just what uh, the blockchain is, what cryptocurrency is, and what NFTs a are. A breakdown, a breakdown yeah. of how, how it how A quick it works video of what it all is. Yeah. Right? It's for people to just be like, oh, that's that's easy to understand. Absolutely, because people like me who looked at it, I'm like, oh, there's a stock market investment? Mm. Yep. I'm only giving it $250 that's just smart, to get it started. Smart move. Here and there and there and there and there and there and there. Oh, I'm going to take... Uh, my fifty dollar hobby money I take every week. Yep. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna put fifty dollars into this. Yep, that's you know, not... Robin Hood or, or or whatever, right? You know what, man? That's not a bad piece of investment advice right there to do because, I mean, I do that with money out of every paycheck and put it away for savings, but I always end up just spending it on vacation money, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But like to to put some something aside, um, and put it in something that you believe in, uh, that you hope is going to be able to make money is not a bad choice. Even to put something in that's uh, a consistently delivered money, even if you're putting it in, you want to try and put it in a vehicle that's making more than the um, inflation rate mm -hmm. so that you can not only keep up with inflation, but beat inflation, right? Um, 100%. That would be the 
actual true one point of financial advice that I would give anybody is try to be if you can beat inflation, try, right? Better run motherfucking faster than someone can fall up the stairs. Yeah, good luck. I'll tell you that right <laughs> now. I gotta get you happen every night. Yeah. Oh man. Fuck. Well, I really, I really do like what you do, man. I, I love the the NFT. I love the cryptocurrency. I love everything you're working on because things I can't necessarily grasp. Um, I've, I've haven't because I haven't had enough time to do it. And I think that, yeah. I think that I'm gonna have to start listening more to your podcast and, and, oh, wow. and, and trying to find a, a basic foundation. I look forward to the videos you're going to be putting out for the, the baseline introduction, the, the foundation that we spoke about earlier, Yeah. because without foundation, you know, your house will just Come melt, melt into the ground yeah. like in a giant sinkhole of economic bullshit and disparaging heartbreak. Right. There is a lot of heartbreak out there when it comes to financial anything, man. Yeah. So, Definitely come and listen. A lot of the stuff that we do, we all, like I said, we always talk about the market. It's not financial advice, but it's just information mm -hmm. and where we think things are going. We're, we're observations, human yes. beings seeing patterns. Yes, we are human beings seeing patterns and calling them out. And we've been pretty good at calling them out. Again, not financial advice in any way, shape, or form, but like we're not idiots out here. <laughs> in case you didn't get the memo. Don't sue him, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I have no money anyways. I have no money anyways. Oh, yes. It's all it's all uh, tied up in assets. Yes. Like a smart individual. Yep. I, I really admire that about you, man. I appreciate you coming on here to, to shed your light on how you transitioned into this person who, who's sitting in front of me today. I yeah. I really admired your your attitude because you always have a like a tenacious, this weird, this weird thing about you. It kind of separates you from my people around you. You you give a shit about the outcome and you suffer through whatever the, the, it takes to get there. Yeah. I mean, so I was just on vacation, um, in Hawaii and we went and did something with my stepdad and my sister and my daughter and myself. Right. And it was, uh, at a place where they were doing like live interactions with, um, Polynesian cultural people. Mm -hmm. And they called up, they told us beforehand we, that they were going to call them volunteers. Right. And they still tricked me. And the dude asked for everybody, all the guys to put their hands up and then asked for volunteers. And I was slow and put my hand down. Got you. He got me. He got me. <laughs> <laughs> right? So I went up there. And the thing is, like, the way I, and I, I told this to my girlfriend afterwards because she wasn't there. I was like, the way I look at it is like, no matter what, dude, it, if you just got to try and have fun with it, man. Mm. Right? Like, yes, the outcome matters. And, you know, whatever the outcome needs to be at that point in time, like, just fucking do what you got to do to make it happen. Okay. Right? Whether it's have fun or work hard or suffer through some stupid shit. Oh, yeah. That's Sometimes you just got to suffer through some stupid shit and then get back to doing you. I love it, man. You have a you have a great mindset, and I, I hope to to take everything you explained to me and all the lessons you shared with us today uh, with me into the next day as well. Something I really, really want to make sure that I have a full understanding is you brought up the difference between blue collar and white collar. Is there ever a point where you see yourself going into a white collar position again after making blue collar money and having the understanding of what a white collar industry has to offer? So here's the thing is there's a, the, the biggest difference that's noticeable is blue collar. You're working obviously with your body, white collar. You're working more with your brain and your mouth. Right. And, um, as you can see, I can do pretty good at both of those things. Yeah. And I've proven that I can do good at the physical stuff as well, right? Yeah. So, like, as I get older, like, I um, I would definitely not mind going back into a white-collar job. But if I do, it's going to be something for myself, mm -hmm. right? Because I can – I know personally I can work all fucking day, <laughs> be exhausted as hell my physically, and, and still come do – I've done three podcasts after working a long ass day once. Oh, yeah. It's not, not impossible at all. No, at like, all. The thing is – if you are doing a white collar job, you go work all day and then you're mentally drained when you get home. Oh, right. Yeah. So I've done Manly that. drain you for the <clears throat> week. Mm -hmm. The body sharpens the mind and the mind has to sharpen the body. Yep. So if you're not, if you're not actually being active during the day and you're just using your mind, it's a completely different thing. So like for me, if I did anything like that, it'd have to be something I really enjoy mm. and it'd be, have to be something that paid way better than what I'm making right uh, i lie if i could go do something in the web3 gaming industry 
I'd probably do it for hundred thousand dollars, maybe even ninety. Maybe even ninety. <laughs> yeah, because it's something that I really like. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? That's the thing is like I'm willing to suffer with living less than I am now. If it's if I get to, like I enjoy what I do, mm-hmm. but like we do put our life on the line every day. Yeah. So the only way to do great work is to love what you do. And I know that after my shoulder injury at work using a pipe wrench, of course, um, just put out that make sure I make sure I say those exact words. I definitely have had my life flash before my eyes quite a few times in the trade. And I wished I was going to have a future with oh, this yeah. forever. Yeah. If you, if you, if you are about to turn out as a mechanic and you can't physically do a re-rope or physically do this and that, you're really smart with electrical stuff and i am not very smart with electrical stuff so far <laughs> so i'm like oh shit i'm like i feel like i'm in a scramble game right now yeah what is the future gonna look like am i gonna make it yeah am i okay is my dyslexia gonna kick my ass when it comes time to plug in wires and blow up a board and be screwed you yeah. know all these questions they come into play yeah and thankfully i have a good pretty good social credit score because i know that's really big on a lot of people social credit scores so my social credit yeah. score is pretty high and i'm oh, able God. to call people and ask for help but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if I can't? What if I need to be on this on the job? All these questions show up, so I I definitely want to yeah become more financially literate, um, have better physical fitness, have better mental emotional uh, fitness as well, and and yeah. ha- have it all come together so I can move in a direction that's going to benefit me in the future. What is what does the future look like for you? Is my question. The future looks like for me uh, right now. I am actively trying to find people to help me develop an NFT collection mm. uh, and possibly a couple. We'll see. I really think believe in NFTs and Web3 and blockchain and really blockchain gaming. Um, I've told my podcast co-host, like, you ever seen the movie Ready Player One? Yeah, I loved it. Uh, God, that was a okay. fucking good movie. So when I think of what people call it as the metaverse, I know mm. – all of your listeners have probably heard the metaverse yeah. before, right? When I think of the metaverse, I think of what was created as the Oasis, mm. right? Um, I would li- love to be someone who helps create something like that. I see. Right. And I'm working on something that might be a stepping stone to that, but I need, I'm trying to develop this collection to bootstrap starting up a company to, do that wow well that's exciting yeah. i definitely look forward to the future yeah. uh you that's know, some, I, that's some major alpha for anyone so, listening like i haven't really told anybody other than like my podcast co-host that so. yes yeah, so that's huge man so yeah. i appreciate you sharing it with me and i i look forward to the opportunity to do whatever i can to support whatever dream or goal you have that's, that's something that i'm really passionate about when people share their time with me and share their experiences i want to return the favor by given them as much time as I can in my life. Um, the effect we have on others is the most valuable currency, crypto or not, in this life. And I just want to put that out there because it's a motherfucking fact. And I really, really enjoy um, you having a positive effect on me, on my listeners, on the listeners you have over in your podcast. And more importantly, that you're open and honest about the, the decisions you made in your life and that you're looking to – achieve new self betterment when it comes, whether it comes to financial success, physical success, um, being, being a present father, you know, going on vacation with your family, spend time with your kids. I love all that, man. So thank you so much for taking the time to do this, man. I never said I was trying to get in better physical shape. Who said I didn't want to add more to this cake? physical shape, physical shape, whatever the figure <laughs> might be, you could be eating cake and, and, get, and, and enjoy it too. Hell. And enjoy it too. It is what it is, man. I'll do some of that. There's nothing wrong with it, man. I can get down with that. I can uh, definitely get down with that. But I, I really do want to say from the bottom of my heart, man, I appreciate you making the trek up here and yeah, of course, taking man. the time to sit through traffic on the way back home. I think we avoided the traffic, so it should be a smooth ride. But yeah. you still risked it all to come up here. So thank you so much. Yeah, it wasn't too bad, man. No, and, and uh, like no bullshit aside, I appreciate you having me and giving me your time because time is the most valuable asset that we all have. Total financial advice. Time is your most valuable asset. And thank you for sharing yours with me. Absolutely, man. I really do appreciate your time. And I always appreciate every single one of my listeners. But I want to give a special shout out to some beautiful people who have been supporting the podcast with listener support. Big surprise. I'm super excited to share with everybody. 
we have four new microphones that are sitting in front of me and a new mixing board that we're going to be rolling out once we download the details. We'll also be spreading to some video podcasts in the very near future. We're going to be on YouTube. Um, of course, Spotify video as soon as they click the accept button. Also on Rumble for those of us who are conservative listeners. So I always do my best to support everybody, whatever demographic you are. And I don't discriminate. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Thank you to my listener supports who made this possible. I'm not able to expand without the gracious donations of one, five or $10 at the link in the podcast description. So thank you so much for a few people. And I hope everybody listening to this was able to take away some financial advice or not financial advice, just his <laughs> experience. Um, make sure I say that very, very freaking clearly uh, for everybody listening. It's super important to understand that our brother Zach here is doing great work with this NFT stuff, and I can't wait for all of you to tap into his podcast. Links will be posted in the description as well. Hope you have a lovely day and enough waffling from me. Bye-bye.